Hi, I'm David from RL Kids. And today we're doing our first ever interview for all our RL Kids followers. We're trying to get an insight into all your favourite rugby league players, coaches and fans. Today we're lucky enough to have former Bradford Crusaders, Penrith Panthers and now Wakefield player Jared Summit. Thanks for joining us, Jared. No worries, David. Thanks for having me. This is our first ever interview, Jared. We've asked all our followers to send in questions about you and your rugby league career. Um, and as you can imagine, after the last two days, most of the questions that are coming in about your recent move to Wakefield Wildcats. Can you tell us about that? Um, well, basically, it were a choice where, for my family's sake, I had to really think about what were best for them. Um, security wise and um, obviously coming home day to day um, just with full of stress and bringing that into my everyday life um, at home with my family um, you know so I think for me personally um, you know it wasn't the most easiest of decisions but for, for the best of my family um, I think it was something that had to be done um, I look back on it and I, I think to myself now, um, could I have gone uh, another year under a similar situation, what Bradford's in now, that I've been in for the past three to four years? Um, and I don't think I could, and that there, I knew I'd, I had to, to move on. Um, Wakefield, they've, uh, they've helped me out in the last three to four days. Um, and, and Bradford, um, you know, I've got a lot of great memories there. Um, and now I think um, I'm just looking forward to getting back on the paddock and, and playing some footy. Ah, uh, good, good. Yeah. So you, you've obviously enjoyed your time at Bradford, but Wakefield's a new challenge now. Uh, how do you see that? Um, uh, like you said, it's going to be a challenge. Um, at the start, you know, obviously, I've got Bradford, um, my first game, so no easy yeah. way about it. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. Again, it's, it's throwing me out of my comfort zone. Um, but once again, you know, it's, it's a part of the job that I'm in. Um, you know, a lot of times are unsettling and trying to, to test yourself as, as a person and a player, and this is one of those times where I'm going to be tested. Um, but again, it's, it's something I'm, I'm really looking forward to and, and trying to put together um, some new memories at Wakefield. Probably. I'm sure they will touch you on Thursday, but you're up for it. Yeah, I'll be definitely getting some rib from, from some old mates, but um, you know, I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll be giving them some yourself. So Jerry, we've had a lot of people write in and ask you a few questions about you and your rugby league career. So how old were you when you started playing rugby league? Um, you know, I played my first game rugby league when I was three. Yeah, where were you, where did you play that at? Um, I think my first game I was playing for, for Doonside Roos um, in the Penrith district. Um, we were playing up at the mountains, I think, and um, we were wearing all multicolored different jerseys. Um, and I remember the first game, obviously, the pitch was set up so we were going across the, the main field. And um, when I got the ball, I ran straight over the sideline and under the, the big goal post thinking I'd scored a try but uh, I'd ran out and that were that were the fashion for the first few games. <laughs> as kids do. <coughs> so as a young kid who was your biggest influences in rugby league? Um, influences in rugby league obviously my family um, were all based around rugby league, brought up within rugby league. Um, so I don't remember too much about it. All, all I do know is mum just said I kept pestering about wanting to play, wanting to play, and obviously going to watch uh, family play. Um, you know, it was just only a matter of time before I started to, yeah. Um, but being a tiny tot, um, mum wasn't too keen on me playing the game. She thought I was going to get injured. Yeah. So Jared, as a kid, who was your favourite players? Um, I think Mount Meninga were one of, one of my biggest idols uh, as a young kid. Um, you know, uh, you were, I thought, the player that a lot of teams um, looked up to. 
um, especially in, in times when they needed to get a bit of mo motivation, inspiration for them to kick on. And, you know, it was a massive centre, uh, you know, damaging him. It was always, uh, always when he put his hand up and, and his team on the front foot. Um, I think once Nam Meninga sort of retired, um, then I looked at Freddie Fittler, uh, Preston Campbell. Um, you know, Preston is a, uh, an indigenous um, professional sportsman. Um, similar sort of build of myself um, and played a similar position and he was one of the then our rel's um, leading players in you know uh, quality. Um, I just thought, oh, well, I want to try and mirror. Um, Maybe like Preston. Yeah, um, in the sense that not necessarily him. I want to be myself at the same time. I would like to to go on and and achieve um, my dream like he has himself. Um, and um, obviously, Freddie Fiddler, um, you know, you don't need to say much about Freddie. He's uh, one of the rugby league legends. Um, Three great players there. Yeah, again, uh, obviously, Meninga centre and uh, both Preston and, and Freddie at six. Um, I'd probably look at six um, being my favourite position. And, um, you know, they, they were great players um, in their time. And hopefully, uh, I can sort of mirror, yeah? In the footsteps. So you played your juniors at Penrith District and then you got the opportunity um, back in 2007 to play first grade for Penrith. You made your debut against South Sydney. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, my debut, that's probably uh, one of my fondest memories um, in, in grade at the moment. Um, you know, uh, again, I was still a, a scrawny little kid. Um, playing along the sides of, of players that I'd been watching myself. Um, Craig Gower, Reese Wester was obviously injured at the time, that's where I got me uh, my start, uh, Luke Lewis. Um, to come up there, you know, and um, to play alongside those guys that were a real big buzz for me. And uh, at the same time, they were a great feel of self-achievement because I trained my whole life and sacrificed my whole life to, to make great and I'd finally made it. Um, the game itself, um, no, man of the match on my debut, I don't think I could have asked for anything more. Uh, we won the game as well. Um, you know, it were a great memory and something that yeah, I great for for career, long. isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You're saying it's tough to get there. Um, what sort of training, how, how often do you train and, and diets and how strict are you in, in um, your commitment to the game? Obviously, getting there is very hard. Um, most important thing is, is the sacrifices you make along the way. Um, I found that there's been the biggest the biggest of all. Um, you know, I wasn't going out um, drinking, wasn't going to parties. I were at the gym, I were out in the field training. Um, I was doing absolutely everything I could to, to ensure that I had the chance to, to make my dream. Um, getting there and staying there, uh, staying there is just as hard, um, if not harder, um, getting there. Obviously, once you're there, it's a great achievement. But um, you know, there's someone on your backside that's chasing for your position. So, as soon as you slip up or you're not to to the standard, well, then you're out and some new whippersnappers snappers in. Um, Diet-wise, I'm pretty lucky. I've got a really fast metabolism, so I could eat pretty much what I want um, and get away with it. But at the same time, when it comes to to game day, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty strict on on what I eat and when I eat. Um, I make sure I have uh, very lean meals, um, you know, high carb, um, and then obviously um, you got to hydrate. Uh, Hydration is really important. Um, I think um, when it comes to recovery as well, that's another thing you want to make sure you're getting adequate sleep and um, you're looking after yourself. It's a very physical game, and you know uh, you're demanding a lot from your body. So not only do you need to uh, obviously train to a certain level, and you need to be looking after yourself, making sure you you're doing right, you're doing little things, uh, getting massages, deep tube massages, which a lot of people think, oh, you get massages every day, they've got it good, but it's uh, it's not pleasant. It's uh, pretty painful when when you go deep tissue. Um, but that's 
what you need times to, to make sure your, your body's in the right condition to, to play week in, week out? You said it's a, a big commitment and a, a lot of um, commitment to the training. How important is your family base around that? Fam fam family support is, is massive. Um, for me, I was lucky enough that my family were all rugby league orientated and been brought up around rugby league. Um, and to have your family support, that there gives you a more sense of drive because you know you've got their support and you're doing the right thing. Um, when they, my, like my mother, she made a lot of sacrifices um, for me to achieve my dream. She uh, made sure I was at training on time. Um, she got me to all my games, all my events. Uh, if there was anything else on, obviously, she'd drop what she was doing to make sure that I was doing what I can to achieve my my dream. So not only are you making huge sacrifices, but so is the family and friends you got around you. Um, support base, obviously, um, everything sort of links in with, with one another. And if you're not if you're not getting a really good support base, and uh, you know you're you're a bit down, that there can affect your performance. Um, so coming home to, to a happy household or knowing that you've got the support from, from your family and friends close around you, um, obviously your morale is going to be a lot higher and you, you'll find you're, you're achieving and um, you're getting better results because you'll be able to perform at a higher level. Excellent. Um, you've been lucky enough to represent Malta. We've had questions about how you became, growing up in Sydney, a representative of Malta. Can you tell us how that came about? Um, obviously, uh, m my father's Maltese, and um, I didn't know anything about Malta had a rugby league side. Um, I think I was 17 at the time, I think it was, and I, uh, I got a phone call from Anthony Mikulov, um who was involved with, with the Malta uh, Rugby League Association, and he just gave me a phone call um, one day and just asked me what, uh, what my commitments were and would I be interested. Um, in representing my heritage and um, I absolutely loved rugby league and um, you know, I think there was no greater honour to, to represent your heritage. Um, so for me, um, I thought it were another way that I could take my game to a next level and at the same time um, build uh, the, the knowledge about rugby league back in, in Malta which is uh, you know, a very tiny place. How long do you think it'll be before we see Malta in the World Cup? <laughs> um, it's definitely something that we're, we, we are pushing for, but um, slowly but surely, you know, the, the fan base in, in Malta is growing. Um, everyone out there does love rugby league, but um, we've had to start from scratch. Um, obviously, we had a lot of our Maltese based players in Australia, but um, there's been a change of rules. Um, so now, you need just about the majority of your players are live in Malta and uh, residents there. So that there sort of took a backward step for, for Malta in generating World Cup sort of um, acceptance really. Um, and we've had to go back to the basics and obviously rugby league in Malta is still fairly new. Um, you know, it, it's growing and it's, uh, it's definitely building up its uh, wider support base and um, players. So, rugby league's growing in Malta, and it's growing around Europe. There's a lot of teams coming through Europe, Serbia, through Russia, Germany. You've played in a couple of the European Cups. What's it like? Um, well, again, like I never knew Malta had a, had a rugby league team, and there's a lot of other nations out there that I didn't know, and I didn't really think they would have a rugby league team. Like uh, Germany's got one, obviously uh, Serbia and Russia. Um, um, I think Netherlands, yeah, places like those, they've, they've got them on. Again, it's, um, they're trying to build the game um, and the culture um, over there where, where they are and uh, they've had to start from scratch. Uh, again, you know, um, I think there's a lot of good talent there. Um, again, you know, they're not quite up to the standard of, you know, England, Australia, New Zealand, but um, it's positive science that uh, rugby league is growing um, around the world and, um, they, they are very competitive, uh, they're, they're, they're both passionate as well. Um, and again, I mean, I've, I'm lucky enough to continue playing with Malta and, um, you know, I've, I've met a lot of great friends um, through those games and, and trips um, over to, to other places, Germany, Netherlands, um, 
And I think uh, the great thing about rugby league is, you know, after after you've played the game, you know, everyone shakes hands and, and gets along. Excellent. So, next step in your career, you, you came over to the UK in uh, Super League in 2010. Uh, after a flight delay for a volcano, you made your debut at the Magic Weekend in Scotland. Um, scoring a try for the Crusaders, how was that? Um, to be honest, it were, it were quite relieving, the fact that I were back on, um, you know, uh, safe ground, so to speak, and um, had a lot of issues with, with flights from Australia to, to England. Um, we had, uh, obviously, the, the volcanic ash um, sort of stopped flights and delayed flights, and then when I was on, um, finally on the, the airplane, um, we had a failure in one of the, uh, one of the, the jet engines um, that, that were failed, so we delayed another three days um, in, I think it might have been Singapore, um, and I was just thinking, was I going to make it to England? <laughs> uh, but lucky enough, um, you got here. We, we got there in one piece, and then uh, no time to rest, it were just drop bags off to the hotel, and straight on um, coach with the team, down to Murrayfield, and um, I was just quite happy to, to play rugby again. It had been a while since I'd been, been back on the field, and I'd just come off a serious uh, ankle injury, um, not only to, to be back playing, but we won, and I scored a try. So uh, for me, that just lifted my spirit, and um, I was ready to, to get back and, and play rugby, which is the game I love. Oh, good. You became a bit of a cult figure with your beards and your haircuts, and tell us about them. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably known for having different hairstyles and uh, weird facial hair or uh, different coloured boots and things like that. Um, I think it's just I like to to be different, um, you know. Individual, individuality is, I think, a, a very rare thing. And growing up, we want, we've got idols and we try and, and be like them, but I think at the same time, it's important to be yourself. And while your, your dreams are to, to be like your idol uh, and pursue like the stars at uh, the top of the game or whatever it is, I said, I think um, you know, being yourself and, and being individual at the same time is um, another thing that we need to really just focus on, on you. Um, I like for just say me and you, instance. Um, I grow up and, and be like you, but I want to be me. So I'll have my sort of take on things that um, I'd like to achieve and, and get to the level of, of where I'm your preferred um, field. Um, but I think there's, there's too many people that forget who they are as a person um, in Enjoy trying to it. achieve. So you've had a good career so far. What's your career highlight so far? Uh, I think I'd have to say probably uh, my debut um, for Penrith, obviously getting man of the match. Um, growing up in, in that area, I had um, half my, my local club was there and just, all, just about all my family were there. Uh, that there is a, a massive highlight for me. Or you know, look at um, when I when I first signed with Bradford, and um, we found out we in administration, and it could well possibly be our last home game. We we're playing against Leeds. Um, the atmosphere there were, were unreal, and I hadn't really witnessed anything like it. And um, with everything that was going on, it just brought the team closer together. And with the arrival of Bradford Leeds. Um, I thought that set the stage, and to come away and beat Leeds uh, with the situation that we're in, that there is uh, another memory, another game that will long live uh, with me. Excellent. So, with your career, it's a tough game. Comes injuries. Have you had any bad injuries? Uh, I've had I've had a few injuries. Um, you know, it's I don't sort of sit back and, <laughs> and watch everything unfold. I like to, to get in there and mix it with, with the big guys. And um, you know, I've had some bad injuries, obviously. I think my knee, I uh, tore my PC on my knee, so I was out for, for four months with that. That there uh, set me back. Um, you know, I looked at myself going, I've 
made all this hard work in the pre-season and in the season, and now I've got this injury, I'm out for four months. I just, I really was down in the dumps. I didn't know what to do next, and if I'd come back and I'd be able to play um, as good as what I was before. Um, I was in a leg brace for, for eight weeks. Um, so I just, I really down the dumps with myself. Um, How hard is it then to come back when you've received a, a, an injury such as that? I don't think it's it's that difficult at all, um, providing you stay positive. I think you've got big support base again, family, friends around you, um, you got your physios, obviously your coach checking on you, making sure uh, you're doing uh, everything right to, so you can get back when you're scheduled to come back. Um, but I think the main thing is just trying to stay positive within yourself. Um, when you're feeling down and negative, you know, that there could hamper um, your recovery time and could prolong you coming back any sooner. So that there, I think, is, is one of the biggest things. And I've learned that an injury is not necessarily a setback, but it's just another challenge that uh, you've got to go through and overcome to uh, continue on with, with the dream. Lovely. So you've had a good career so far. There's plenty more to come with Wakefield. Um, what other sports are you interested in? And, <laughs> uh, and what did you play as a kid other than rugby league? I think uh, just about anything that involved the ball. Um, I'd play, um, you know, growing up as a kid, I was very active. Uh, I, remember, I remember one day, um, I've gone from doing my uh, regional school cross country in the morning, um, straight from that, uh, straight from that, I went to back to school and played uh, a rugby league game, and then straight from that, I went uh, that afternoon. I had club football training, um, and then once that was finished, I went home and I was outside in the street just kicking the ball around with, with some friends. Um, never really stopped, but you know, uh, I, I really love my Oz tag. Uh, that's something I'm very passionate about, and something that I still play to this day. Um, Every year I'll go back to Australia and play in the national tournament at Coffs Harbour. Um, love tennis, um, don't mind kicking the, the soccer ball around, even though I probably wouldn't play that game. I, I don't mind just kicking around with friends and family. Um, yeah, any, any sport really, I, I didn't mind playing and I put, put my hand up. No, good, good. So, if you weren't playing rugby league, what do you think you'd be doing? Ah, uh, good question. <laughs> good question. Um, not too sure, to be honest. Um, I definitely think maybe I'd be some sort of sport, but again, what sport? I'm not sure, but I think I'd definitely be doing something um, sports orientated. Um, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. But you've been lucky enough that you've you've followed your career in rugby league, and you are where you are now with Wakefield. Which other sporting uh, names or people would you look up to? Um, well, growing up as a kid, um, I loved Cathy Freeman. Um, she was an Olympic 400 meter, meter um, runner. And um, being of indigenous uh, background, um, you know, she, uh, I got a lot of motivation from, from watching her achieve and um, being an idol for, for Indigenous kids and um, <clears throat> also Michael Jordan, um, our massive MJ fan, uh, still am. Um, yeah, just people like those two there uh, I really looked up to. Uh, again, they weren't in the sport that, that I wanted to pursue, but um, you know, the, the, the achievements in their own Yeah, way. exactly, the achievements they've made and um, the, the top, top of their sport, um, again, it, gave me uh, inspiration and belief within myself that I can achieve and um, you know, anything is possible. Excellent. So Jared, as a Super League player, what advice would you give to any young kids coming through playing rugby league and want to follow a career path like yourself? Um, I think the biggest thing for me were it's the easiest way to make friends, and make great memories, uh, at the same time, you're leading a, a fit and active lifestyle, um, you know, get you out of the house. But um, just the, the, mem the memories you'll make, I think you'll um, last a lifetime. And it's definitely something that you'll keep with for you forever. And 
when you've got kids of your own, uh, you can share those stories and then watch them make memories of their own. Um, whether they follow in your footsteps and, and play rugby league or they do anything different, uh, I think it's got a similar outcome. Right. Brilliant. So we've asked a lot of kids questions. We've got um, a lot of quick questions, yep. short answers for you. All right. We give them a bowl. So, who's the best player you've played with? Best player I've played with? Um, probably say uh, Petro Simaceba. Yeah. Best player against? Uh, Matty Bowen. Matty Bowen. <coughs> Gone to Wigan now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Favourite colour? Red. First team you played with? Doomside Bruce. You have any pets? Five dogs. <laughs> Five dogs? Yeah. I won't ask you the name. <laughs> McDonald's or KFC? McDonald's. <laughs> you got a nickname? Jazz. Jazz. If you were to go anywhere in the world, where would it be? Uh, America. America? Your favourite position? 5-8. Favourite movie? Um, I've got a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, Bit of a movie buff. Yeah, I don't mind the old fleet. Probably... Uh, Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans, good good show. Favourite song? Um, probably uh, Collide by Howie Day. Favourite TV show? Uh, Two and a Half Men. Great show. Favourite food? Spaghetti bolognese. Anything you're afraid of? Mum. <laughs> I've met his mum. <laughs> um, Favourite subject at school? Uh, probably a DT. DT. Yeah, woodwork. Woodwork. Yeah. Right. Favorite place to play? Um, probably Doonside Oval, <laughs> Cooler Reserve. Lovely. So, Jared, thanks for spending time with us and answering some questions for us here at RL Kids. All our followers will be interested to see your, your answers now, and, and wish you all the best of luck for your career in at Wakefield now. Um, but before we go. We believe it's your birthday today. So, we've got you a cake. <laughs> Happy 27th birthday and all the best for your career. Cheers, mate. Thank you. You can make a wish now. Ladies and gentlemen, Jared Samet.